Hello and welcome back to Tech Day's 10 Minute IT Jams. I'm Tech Day's Managing Editor and today we're speaking with Aussie Broadband CTO, John Reisinger. Aussie Broadband is an Australian telco provider of internet, mobile and many other services to local businesses and consumers. The company is based in regional Victoria and provides services all across Australia. Welcome, John. Thanks, Sarah. All right, we will get stuck into the questions. So, like all good tech companies, Aussie Broadband was formed in a lounge room in Morwell. How did this happen? Well, I think the, uh, the trope was actually a garage, but uh, we didn't have a garage, so the lounge room had to do. Um, so I met Phil, who's our MD, through Scouts. He was a uh, venture leader. I was a Rover Scout at the time. I'm still a, scout, a Cub Scout leader these days. Um, I worked with him at another ISP around 2000. When we finished up working there, we uh, came back to uh, Morwell and uh, being both regional people, we identified that there was a uh, bit of a lack of broadband at um, farms and, and rural areas around the place. So we uh, started up company wideband networks. Um, just for reference there, the, uh, the fastest speed we offered when we started was 1.5 megabits, which was a, a lot more than the uh, 56 kilobits you got on the modem at the time. But uh, compared to the 1,000 megabits you get these days, you can see how far the industry's come. Um, we actually started as two companies. So we had wideband networks here in uh, Gippsland, and we all, there was also another company, Westview Broadband, that we worked well with in uh, Warrnambool. Um, worked great at the time because we were both regional, both in our own areas. Um, after a few years, we uh, started uh, offering satellite, both of us, and that was going to be conflicting with each other and uh, competing. So rather than uh, compete, we decided to join together and uh, come on some broadband. And when uh, MBN came out, we uh, were offering it in our local areas and then we decided to uh, offer it uh, Australia-wide. So we signed up with a wholesale provider and that worked all right for a while, but then we started having some speed issues because there were more customers coming on than, uh, than could handle. So we decided to do our own thing and we uh, took a bit of a, uh, a bit of a punt and uh, ran uh, our own bandwidth out to all of the uh, MBN poise around Australia. And uh, it's pretty much gone from there. Since then we've, uh, we've had, uh, things like my Aussie, our new carbon portal, um, on our new high speed plans and we're only going from there into the future. Yeah, yeah. So when you look at Aussie broadband now, what do you think about, you know, how far you've come since the early days? Um, look, it's great to see. I mean, we started as we started with a, a single employee and now we're uh, we're up close to closer to five hundred employees and it really is, it, it's, it, a lot of it is about the, the people, about the staff that we have. It's, uh, it's like a family here. We, we, you know, we, we really, one of, one of our values is uh, be good to people. Another one is have fun. And uh, we like to do both of those. And uh, you know, without the people we've got, we wouldn't be where we were today. Yeah, brilliant. All right, so I understand you are working on a new fiber build project. Can you share some details around that? Yeah, so um, we're rolling out our own fibre in the ground around our uh, various data centres we're in in the different states of Australia and also out to a large number of the NBN poise. Um, the way we've been bringing bandwidth out to the poise so far is that we take uh, wavelength services from uh, other providers and because of the nature of the industry, those can often take up to six to nine months to uh, provision. So we've got to plan ahead that far for uh, how many customers and how much bandwidth we expect to use. When we've got our own fiber running out to the poise, we expect that they, you know, that'll be a lot quicker because we can uh, run it up as we need it. It also allows us to run in a bunch of uh, innovative new products over it. And uh, the first one of those is going to be uh, putting in uh, fiber links to businesses that are within the footprint of our fiber and uh, getting them set up on uh, plans that are up to 10 gigabits of, for a link. Wow, that will be um, amazing for Australian businesses. All right, so um, Aussie Broadband uh, is known for having good communications about um, outages. Now we want to kind of quiz you on this. What is the most common reason for a network outage? Um, could it be rats? Could it be someone digging a hole or is it something else completely? 
Yeah, so there's, there's a number of different things that cause outages, but one of the one of the ones that uh, is there is uh, optic fibre cables. So when you're using the internet, no matter how you're accessing it, whether it's via your phone, whether it's over the MBN, uh, whether it's over a uh, an ADSL connection, at some point that uh, in, that internet connection will go via a fibre optic cable. Now they're generally only a couple of centimetres uh, in diameter, and uh, they run through the ground either in a pipe or Sometimes they're uh, actually just laid directly into the ground or even under the sea to go to get over internationally. And uh, there's a number of different ways that they can, uh, that they can be cut. Uh, rats seem to uh, very much enjoy chewing on them. Um, post hole diggers and backhoes uh, go through them on a, uh, a semi-regular basis. And uh, for the ones under the sea, uh, boats and their anchors are a bit of a problem. Um, now there's various things you can do to fix those and uh, prevent that sort of thing. Uh, for rats, you can wrap the uh, the fibre cable in a uh, fibreglass, which they can't chew through. Digging holes, we have the dial before you dig service where you can call up and say, I'm digging a hole over here and they'll tell you what's in that location so that you can uh, work out where you can dig safely and how deeply you can dig. And for the anchors, they uh, will often, um, rather than just laying the uh, fibre along the bottom of the ocean, they'll actually dig it under the, under the fl ocean floor so that you can, uh, the anchors won't get it. But uh, really the biggest tool we have to prevent those sorts of things is actually redundancy. So for, as an example, we have uh, optic fibre connections between different states. Um, and we'll have two of them running in different, uh, in different paths, you know, tens, hundreds of kilometres apart from each other. So quite often there'll be a fibre cut on one of those links, but you won't even notice it because it'll just go over to the other link. And we try to bring that redundancy into all of our network with uh, multiple data centres in each state, multiple routers in each, uh, in each data centre, and then multiple links between each router and, uh, and each state. So that uh, if there's any single point of failure, it, uh, it doesn't affect anyone. Yeah, yeah, and that's absolutely crucial for business, isn't it? Isn't it? Always having, you know, absolutely. always on um, internet. All right, so uh, you connect to other providers internationally. Now, what would be some of the reasons that you would do such a thing? Yeah, so about a year ago now, we uh, connected to uh, we to some uh, undersea cables going to Singapore and to the USA. And then from there, we connected, we've connected to a bunch of internet exchanges and other providers in those, uh, in those locations. Now, um, one of the main reasons we've done that for is for some control. So um, in the past, we've used local, uh, local providers to go to connect internationally. And um, at that point, we're basically relying on them to send the traffic where it needs to go by the most direct path that they can. And um, while that happens most of the time, it doesn't always happen. Things like cable cuts and uh, you know, equipment failures and things can affect that. And that was having a bit of an effect on some of our uh, international uh, locations, especially for people like, uh, like gamers who uh, you know, want, want the lowest latency and the lowest ping they can to uh, Get the uh, get get one up on their uh, opponents, and so this allows us to actually send international traffic in a more direct fashion. So we can send it uh, to Singapore and from there on to Europe and over to the USA um, directly, rather than uh, rather than potentially going via Japan and then over to the US or uh, you know doing a doing a world trip to uh, to get to certain locations. And as with uh, as, as with the rest of our network, it, it is redundant. We have multiple links going to Singapore and multiple links going to the US. Um, it's especially relevant for undersea cables because quite often when, uh, when they cut it can often be up to a month until they're repaired because they've actually got to uh, charter a ship and get it out there and uh, pull the cable up from the sea floor and repair it, which uh, is a little bit longer than, uh, than what you can do on land. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the worst thing would be uh, no internet while all of this happens or very slow internet um, for mm -hmm. that matter. All right, so we'll switch gears a little bit and talk about, I guess, the broader kind of technology trends. So what have been some of the biggest changes in terms of technology since you've worked in the industry? Look, I think the biggest one would have to be the MBN. 
it's a uh, it's a massive project. It's given uh, high speed broadband to uh, practically all of Australia, and it's, it's allowed us to offer services of Australia wide. It's um, I think uh, you know it, it's really changed the game in terms of how uh, you know how how people get access to the internet in, in Australia. Um, I think that would be the uh, the biggest change that I've seen. All right, thank you. So that was another Tech Day 10 Minute IT Jam with Aussie Broadband's CTO, John Reisinger. Thank you so much for talking to us today, John. Thank you, Sarah.